Hi, I'm Dr. Mindrani Sharma. I'm a cosmetic and plastic surgeon practicing in East Timor Cosmetic Clinic, Saki. Today, uh, we're going to be talking about two of the most commonest surgeries which a woman coming to my center asks for, namely breast augmentation and breast lift. Now, breast augmentation, as the name suggests, uh, is a surgery to increase the volume of the breast. So, uh, when you're talking about this, there are two common groups of age groups of patients who approach me for the surgery. One is uh, young women in the age group of 18 to say 25 years, and the second age group comprises of women in the late 30s or in their 40s who are looking for uh, increase in the volume of breast, which have lost volume following pregnancy and breastfeeding. So, uh, let us have a discussion about the various aspects of this procedure. Some of the common queries which a patient has uh, when she comes to me is regarding the uh, you know, implant and its effect on pregnancy and lactation, especially when you're talking about a young unmarried girl. So, implant insertion is not going to interfere with your capacity of breastfeeding or uh, cause any changes in pregnancy. Because uh, when you're putting an implant, you're not really putting an implant inside the breast. You're putting an implant under your breast tissues or under the muscle in certain patients. So the entire gland, the pelvic ducts, everything remains absolutely intact. So tomorrow, when the woman has a child who wants to breastfeed, the implant is no in no way going to interfere with that particular function. Uh, the second most common question is about the life of the implant. So they come and ask me whether this is going to be a one-time procedure. So implants are uh, essentially foreign bodies. So even though we're using an implant which is internationally accepted and uh, is of a very good quality, uh, they can't be something which is lifelong and uh, companies ideally recommend these to be changed every 10 years. Another thing which we have to understand at this point is that uh, implant insertion is not going to you know, stop the normal changes of aging, like you will have sagging, the size of the breast changes, especially during pregnancy and breastfeeding. So, there will be changes in the woman's body and the implant cannot be tailor-made in such a way to suit all those stages. So yes, after a certain point in time, the implant needs to be changed. Uh, depending upon the size of the, you know, the height of the patient, the frame of the patient, we choose the size of the implant. Also, we take into consideration the amount of augmentation the patient desires. So, roughly, as a rough guide, a 150 cc uh, implant will increase the cup size by about uh, one. So, from a size B to a cup C would be accomplished by a 200 cc implant. But this is again uh, very variable, it depends upon the height of the patient, it depends upon the frame of the patient. So uh, we, during our consult, we get to know what the patient desires and we also see whether that is possible with her frame, her available breast tissue and we decide upon the size of the implant. Uh, another question which the patient asks me is regarding the shape of the implant. So the most common implant which we use is a round implant. Uh, there are other types of implants like the anatomical implants which are suited to a certain subset of the population. Now, uh, implants also come with various specifications. So you have you know, low projection, you have medium projection, you have high projection. All this is basically customized and tailor-made according to what the patient desires and also according, according to the frame of the patient. So we have a concert where we discuss what kind of a projection or what kind of a increase, what kind of a shape the patient is looking at and also whether that's feasible in that particular patient. Now, uh, one of the things which a patient uh, needs to know is that implants can be inserted without uh, scars which are really perceptible. So, the traditional approach is the intramammary approach in which the implant is put through a cut in the breast crease and uh, uh, the, that is hardly visible once the implant uh, settles down and the scars are healed. The other approaches can be around the nipple, which is called the perioral approach, is also an approach which is in the uh, armpit or the transaxillary approach as we call it. So any of these uh, approaches do not lead to perceptible scarring. However, 
if you want to combine the implants with some kind of a lifting procedure, as I said, the second category of patients who are coming to me in the age of 30 to 40 years, where there are there is an issue not only of lack of volume but also of sagging, then we will need to incorporate a procedure where the skin is also being removed and this will normally entail longer scars. So uh, again, depending upon the complexion of the patient and depending upon the technique used, the scars vary. So we are talking about a breast lift, uh, there are various ways of doing it which depends upon the extent of laxity. Uh, so we have the peri alola, which is an incision around the you know the nipple and uh, it merges very well when it heals. It's suited to a very small subset of patients with just mild sagging. Then the second kind is a lollipop incision which uh, involves a you know cut around the nipple which again there's a vertical line going down from the nipple to the crease of the breast. But uh, this also settles very well especially if uh, we will look to look at the long term results. So initially maybe 3-4 months the scar doesn't look good but over a period of 6 months to 1 year this settles very well. Uh, we also might use modalities to reduce scarring like lasers or we can use scar reduction creams or silicone gel sheets which can take care of the scar very well. The third kind of incision which is used is a anchor incision which is used where the skin laxity is a lot and it has both a vertical component same as that in the lollipop incision and a transverse component which is along the breast trees. So yes, breast lift in conjunction with the breast implant will involve scarring but uh, these scars are uh, obviously not visible uh, in most of the clothing the woman wears and usually the patient will be satisfied with the procedure despite the scars. So, uh, some of the common precautions we need to take care of while contemplating a breast implant are adequate post-operative rest. So, uh, for a period of about 6 weeks after the implant or after the breast lift, the patient has to restrain from activities which involve strenuous exercises or weight lifting, say uh, if the person is actively into gymming, into weight training and all that has to be put to a hold for at least 6 weeks. The other procedures which are, uh, sorry, the other day-to-day -day activities like office work and all usually can be resumed anything between the, uh, in a week's time to a couple of weeks time depending on whether the patient has just undergone an implant or has undergone an implant plus the lift combined. So uh, it is a crucial period of about six weeks post-surgery where we have to follow all the precautions. There is also a modification in the kind of bra which the patient wears. So, uh, in the six weeks following the breast implant surgery, we usually ask the patient to wear a compression garment, which is you know tailor-made to the patient, or a comfortably fitting sports bra, which gives adequate support and coverage to your breast. After a period of six weeks, the patient can use, uh, wear whatever kind of lingerie she wants to wear. Now, uh, one of the Alarming concerns in the mind of a patient is whether these breast implants lead to an increased risk of cancer. Now, I wouldn't deny it completely, yes, there have been instances of implants uh, being associated with increased risk of breast cancer, but these are quite low. And in fact, in India, uh, the incidence is hardly uh, reported. And uh, these are also. Uh, you know, the detection or the treatment of the breast cancer will not be hampered by the presence of implants. Some of the other common complications which can occur are infection or something which you call capsular contracture in which the implant becomes visible or there is wrinkling of the overlying skin. Uh, again, these, the proportion of patients who actually end up having these complications is quite low. Especially if we have chosen an implant which is well fitted to the patient's frame and the patient has taken care of all the post-operative precautions judiciously. So uh, we have to understand that overall breast implants and breast lifting are very safe surgeries. They have a very high satisfaction rate. Uh, yes, uh, when we talk about breast lifting, there is a period where the patient can be a little troubled by the appearance of the scars and also by the 
uh, you know, the healing process in, in itself. But over a period of about, I would say, one and a half, two months, the patient does get the quirky or uh, lifted breast she desires. Also, we can reduce the size of the nipple areola, which is usually enlarged when the patient has sagging or when the patient has, you know, developed a loss of volume which was initially there during pregnancy and suddenly the nipple areola has become stretched. So all that also can be restored to her pre-pregnancy state. So uh, to conclude, both breast implants and breast lifts are quite simple surgeries. They are daycare surgeries and uh, do not involve any major complications. Um, if you have any further queries, then you can just DM us on our uh, website and we'll be happy to respond to all of them. Thank you.